Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we have a U-Haul today. And then I'll explain why I have that in a second. So, as you know, I got my new car that I'm building. And I live in Michigan, so right now it's like 39 degrees outside. It's freezing. So, um, my cousin has a shop that he was nice enough to let me borrow for a couple days. So I could use the heat to work on the car in the inside and uh, i don't have a heated garage so so that's what we're gonna do um so i rented a u-haul i'm gonna go load some tools uh, my engine hoist um you know the floor drags my power tools and then we're gonna head over to his shop and uh start disassembling the car and on the way there i'm gonna talk to you about the plan of what i'm trying to do to that car as well as you know what kind of parts what kind of motors going on it and all the other details so let me get this thing backed up into my garage and we'll go from there all right so uh, so this should be good enough for what i need it for um we're gonna take the floor jacks the stands um the engine hoist of course I got my tool cart over there, load everything up in here, and we'll head down to the shop. I'm by myself, so it's gonna take me a while to do this. And I also bought this new dolly that holds up to 2,000 pounds. So we can use this to, you know, for the gas tank, for the cradles, whatever's heavy. Look how big these wheels are. So not a bad investment, only about 70 bucks. So let's get started. All right, guys, I got most of the stuff I need. Um, for Dolly, I got a whole bunch of tools back there. My flashlights and my charging kits. In those bags, I have my um, sockets and wrenches. That should be uh, most of the stuff I need for now. If I do need anything else, I'll come back for a second load. So we got the toolbox locked up that's for something and we're gonna head out all right so we made it to the shop that's the car over there. We're gonna start unloading these parts and then uh, we'll talk in details. What are we doing today? So we're gonna get started on this. I'm gonna um, jack it up, put the four jacks under it, take the wheels off. And while I'm working, we'll be explaining um, what's the plans for this and what are we gonna do to it. So let's get started. We have a lot of work to do. All right guys, so I'm doing a voiceover. I'm just, um, I'm honestly watching the video as we speak. I'm kind of just, watching myself work at this point. But uh, the reason for that is um, at the time when I was filming the video, there was a lot of background noise because I was working at my cousin's shop, as I said from the beginning. Um, and then he had this heater going on and that thing was super loud. So I couldn't hear, I couldn't even hear myself talking when I was trying to record. But um, I want to get into like the, the reason behind this, uh, what's the plan. I mean, as you're seeing from the title, you guys have an idea of what I'm doing. But of course, there's a lot of questions on how that's even gonna work. Is it even possible and all that good stuff. So um, let's get into it. Let's talk about how we're gonna make this happen. 
and how I even came up with the idea to uh, do this, right? So well, after I sold my car to Lil Baby, I was thinking about doing another car. I wanted to do another build, but I wanted it to be something like really special, like not like another just regular Hellcat or just like something that anyone else could build, you know, just by, you know, doing it themselves. Um, and honestly, in the beginning, I wasn't really trying to build another 300. I was like probably going to do like a Magnum or like a first uh, first gen like charger or just something unique, you know. Um, but then I, I just realized how much attention the 300 got and just because how how special it was. So I'm like, I have to do another one. And that's what most of you guys were requesting is to get another 300 built. So that's what we're doing. Um, so starting off was I had to find another car, of course, and I was like the hardest thing ever because I couldn't find the color that I wanted. I wanted either a white one or a red one, period. I didn't want black. I didn't want another silver one. I mean, don't get me wrong. Silver was nice. I just wanted something just a little more flashy, which is of course is red, but I looked around, I, I shopped everywhere and literally there was nothing. And if there was, they're asking like this ridiculous price that didn't even make sense at all. Um, and what's crazy is I honestly found the car through one of my followers. So if you follow my Instagram, I posted a story on my Instagram saying that I'm looking for another 300 and it kind of gave it away at that point. I'm doing another 300 build, but, um, I said that I'm doing another 300 and I am looking for a car. It has to be red or white, has to have a sunroof, has to have a clean title and a clean Carfax. Um, literally, I posted it and not even an hour goes by. I'm having like 60, 70, 80 DMs of all these cars around the States. And I'm like, what? Um, so I'm going through them and I found this one that I'm, of course, I bought. I found it in Indiana at a Chevy dealership, which was interesting. It was actually a trade-in. Um, it was a one owner. It had everything that I wanted. It had the park sensors, had the blind spot, it had the sunroof. Um, my main concern was I, I wanted the car to be in body shape, clean. I didn't really care like mechanical wise because of course that's all gonna get replaced. Um, so that's, that was what I was talking about the salesman. I'm like, listen, man, I'm like, I'll pay your full asking price. As long as you guarantee me, I'm not going to get, you know, a piece of rust when it gets her. Cause I couldn't get down there and pick it up myself because of my work schedule. So I had to ship down to my house or to Michigan. And, um, he sent me some pictures, he sent me some videos, but still you couldn't really tell exactly how the condition was because you know, everything's over the phone. So I, I took the chance, you know, I, um, I, I mailed them a cashier's check. I made some of the payments on a credit card just for a deposit. And um, they were they were very, very fair with me. They even delivered the car, not even charged me a dollar for it. And um, when I came and seen the car, it was it was perfect. I mean, of course, there's like a scratch here and there, but nothing that I can't really fix up. But I'm talking about like major dents or major scratches. There was none. The car was really clean. Um, and then I was really happy with it. So... So I bought the car, I got the car out the way, and then I already had a plan in mind of what I wanted to do regarding, you know, the powertrain and all that good stuff. And I was thinking either a Demon or a Red Eye. And honestly, in the beginning, I was thinking about doing like a track call conversion, but there was no way that um, four wheel drive differential was gonna fit in there. It was it just it just impossible. Well, that's, that's what I think of doing this for so long. You know, that's a that's a very big setup. And in order for that to happen, you have to like custom fabricate a frame and all that stuff. I didn't want to get into it that deep. Probably in the future, I might do something like that. But as of now, I wanted to do something, you know, else. So I did some research and um, I really wanted to do like a demon or a red eye. But at the time, demons were like, if you found a power chain for a demon, they were asking like, 35,000 or 40,000. I'm like, that's crazy. I mean, that's, that's, that I mean, it's, yeah, it is a demon, but why, you know, it doesn't make any sense to spend that much money on that when literally people don't really know this, but a red eye engine is a demon engine. It's literally the same exact motor. Um, only difference is why the demon makes a little bit more power is because it's tuned for, you know, the race fuel and just has better uh, air management because of the Ram hood. Um, 
you know, a lot of people don't know that, but I'm, I'm telling you, it, the demon motor is a red eye motor. That's just what people don't tell you. So I was in the market for a red eye motor and um, I found one. He gave me the motor and trans. Um, we'll get into prices later, but um, I picked those up. What was it? I mean, depending on when I dropped this video, this was like two weeks ago. I still need the rear cradle. I still need a whole bunch of parts, but after I bought it, and then it really hit me like, how is this gonna work? Because this is a two door car. Um, and then I'm like, you know, so I'm like, let me do some research. So I did some research, and it turned out the the cradle was actually the same thing off a charger. So the Challenger and the Charger share the same suspension, like everything, the same part number, same. It's a, it's identical. So I'm like, all right, that's good. So the suspension's fine. Um, and then I found out the drive shaft on the Challenger was different than the Charger, which obviously made sense because the Challenger is a lot, you know, the, the wheelbase is longer than the Challenger, um, than the Charger. So, um, so I did some research. I read about all those different kind of things. And then I found out that if I get a, let's say I get a red eye suspension, a red eye motor and trans, that I could just get a Charger Hellcat dry shaft and it will work. I mean, yeah, the, the red eye um, drive shaft is different. I think it's stronger or whatever, but I'm probably gonna just change it later on, make it into the, one of those aluminum ones, those custom racing ones. Um, so that wasn't, you know, my worries really. So I got that out the way. I figured out the suspension would work. I figured out the motor and trans will fit. You know, they're not any bigger than the regular Hellcat ones. They'll bolt on just like normal. And then I moved on to the problem of wiring. So the Challenger um, harness is off a two-door car, obviously. And uh, if I'm going to put it in a 300, which is a four-door car, I'm going to be short half a car, meaning that two, two of my doors are going to have no power. So I had to think of a way to make that happen. And as of now, honestly, I'm still working on it. But I mean, it'll be... It'll be like, you know, something that I can work on later on after I get everything situated and I get the car running. I'm pretty sure there's a way to make it work. You could probably like wire up your own small relay box and um, hook it up to, you know, the battery and power it up and down. So that's not really a big concern right now. Um, but honestly, everything else is is going as planned. If I, if I did the right homework and I did the right research, this should work. And um, of course, this is going to be the only one in the world. I do not know. I have never seen anyone else do this. That's why I'm so excited of building this car. And I just want to get it done so fast. But we're going to say we're working on it. Um, I'm going to have the video continue to roll. And you guys can see what's going on so far. I mean, the purpose of part one, we're just tearing it down. You know, stripping up the front end. I'm um, just going to get ready for part two. Which is, uh, of course, pulling out the motor, the suspension. And whatnot. I didn't want to make too long of videos because I did uh, read some of the comments on how you guys were saying the videos were a little bit too long. And honestly, I don't blame you. I didn't realize they were that long after trying to rewatch them myself. And um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a lot standing there for twenty five minutes, thirty minutes, just watching a single video. And um, I do appreciate most of you. Um, you guys didn't complain about it. You guys actually. You know, liked it and sat there and watched the whole video through the whole thing. Um, and you guys are great for that. But I'm going to try to cut it down into segments. That way, each part will have its like own purpose. For example, like this one, it's tearing apart the front end. Next one could be, you know, pulling out the motor and how you do that. That way, if you're going to be following along the videos and building this yourself, you could just play back which part you need to play and not watch a whole 30, 40 minute video, if that makes sense. But other than that, guys, I mean, um, that's going to be the plan. I mean, of course, we'll talk into detail later on of what kind of rims I'm going with, um, what kind of brakes, what kind of interior, you know, all that good stuff. Um, it's going to be a really, really good build. Um, I promise you that it's going to be a really unique one. I mean, of course, the the Hellcat 300 I had was like a one of maybe two or three. But hopefully this one uh, will be a one of one for real. Like no one else has it. And that's what's going to make this one so special. So um, I'll continue to make this uh, video happen and um, give you guys the content you guys look for. And I do appreciate you guys for kind of, you know, continuing to support me and enjoying the videos that I post on here. And I will, you know, 
continue to give you guys the content you guys all want. So I appreciate you guys, and we'll see you uh, back here on part two.